forward to in terms of issues for a later discussion. Uh, and I will welcome our second speaker, which is Yashukisa uh, Yamamoto. Is there a PowerPoint? Uh, yes, yes. Um, hello, good morning. Um, let me introduce uh, myself a bit. Um, my name is Yasuya Mamoto, uh, Economic Affairs Officer at the UN ESCOA. And uh, one of my research interests rests on uh, macroeconomics, uh, which is a branch of economics uh, that deal with the uh, aggregated economic agents, uh, such as aggregated consumer, aggregated producer, aggregated government. Um, we often assume those aggregated and quite abstract economic agents uh, could act as individual consumer, producer, and government. Um, some years ago, probably four or five years ago, um, I had a talk with an economist, fellow economist specializing in uh, rural development and poverty issues. Um, we discussed a particular country's economic situation um, he talked much about the uh, issue of governance, corruption, um, politics, lack of infrastructure, and suggested that the, uh, the government there would need to increase development expenditure for their priority. Um, I countered, unfortunately, I countered his argument, uh, saying that uh, the country had a severe balance of payment problem um, with depleting foreign reserves, a large portion of the government revenues was financed by debt. Um, a large amount of debt was held by the central bank, and asset side of central bank's balance sheet are uh, awash with uh, domestic government debt, not foreign assets. Um, this monetization of government deficit caused a hyperinflation. Um, then, from my point of view, uh, what should be the priority of the government um, should be a set of macroeconomic policies, such as a devaluation of the national currency, a measure to discourage imports and increase exports. Um, in sum, any measures to uh, restrict uh, expansion of domestic demand. Um, upon my saying, I mean, he listened to me, and uh, he told me that the, uh, okay, but you sounded like more like an accountant, not an economist. So that's uh, for my career, my turning point, say. Um, sorry. Um, So um, this event made me think and rethink about the uh, way to see an economy for analytical investigations. I also realized that the way I look, economic realities was framed um, by several accounting principles. And that uh, when macroeconomists talk about data, they are not talking about observed data. but in many cases, what are estimated from accounting principles. Um, I have been aware that the, uh, the system of macroeconomic, macroeconomic account, accounting, uh, which is formally known as the system of national accounts, SNA, has technical limitations. Um, for a well-known example, labor within a household is not accounted as value added if it is not paid the informal sector is less likely to be counted, an equal exchange of value rarely holds in economic transactions, which gives rise to a fundamental question of money as a unit of measurement. Despite knowing these limitations, I have been holding my opinion that um, essential macroeconomic indicators, such as gross domestic, domestic product, 
GDP, national income of SNA are still the best proxies that reflect economic realities. Uh, moreover, I have to point out that the, uh, those indicators occupy the axiomatic status in economic discussions among experts and non-experts alike. In the meantime, I feel, really feel compelled to be critical to macroeconomists, including myself. The controversy over the structural adjustment programs since the 80s are well documented for many countries, um, particularly for the rural sector of developing economies. Um, despite their questionable records, international financial institutions are now advocating a so-called uh, poverty reduction strategy approach that was evolved, evolved out of the structural adjustment programs. At the core of these programs, uh, those institutions use macro accounting based models um, known as the um, uh, revised minimum standard model or RMSMX or financial programming. Um, while I'm not against the use of those macro accounting based models, I believe it is time to rethink the way macroeconomists recognize economic <coughs> realities. As part of my effort to be critical of my expertise uh, in this talk, I'd like to provide a short review as to how macroeconomists, uh, macroeconomists' way of thinking, um, such as double entry bookkeeping and accounting, and gross metaphor derived from them, uh, how those things were formed as a social construct. I would also like to point out that macroeconomist analytical thinking is biased for urban, formal, and measurable sectors as they fit into their growth metaphor. The rural sector is often left out and missing in the economic reality that macroeconomists are seeing. We need to revise the accounting principle to modify that dominant growth metaphor to redress this bias. Um, Historically, um, there are two streams of the developments for the creation of present-day uh, macroeconomic accounting statistics. The first stream of developments includes the measurement of and quantitative reasoning that made available for an aggregated uh, abstract economic entity or a macroeconomic entity, such as a community or a state. Um, William Petty's political arithmetic in 17th century is usually referred as the origin of macroeconomic accounting. And Petty calculated the national income with other economic aggregates with, which was used to assess the strengths of the material power of England comparing to its commercial rivals, Holland and France. A century later, uh, Francois Quenet's tableau économique uh, followed, which more focused on intersectoral relationships between agricultural sector and other production sectors in seeking investable and taxable surpluses for the state. Um, the second stream of, uh, includes uh, double entry bookkeeping, and double entry bookkeeping was invented in the 15th century. Um, since then, the practice of double entry bookkeeping was made sophisticated and increasingly applied to businesses in the 19th century. Um, in double entry bookkeeping, every transaction results in two equal and offsetting entries, one a debit and the other credit. Um, the importance of double entry bookkeeping was addressed by famous social service such as Max Weber, Joseph Schumpeter, and Werner Zombert. They argue that accounting play a key technical role in enhancing rationality and enhancing the development of capitalist methods of production. Double entry accounting makes, makes it possible for capitalists to evaluate rationally the consequences of their past decisions. They can calculate exactly the resources currently available to them and those that will be forthcoming in the future. 
Um, um, even though Petty's table uh, was based on double entry bookkeeping, the structure was once lost and then revived by Keynes in 1940. Keynes gave considerable attention to the question of balancing and applied a clear double entry accounting framework to his work in How to Pay for the War. Um, the fundamental accounting principle for today's national account was quickly established after that. Um, and now, nowadays, many people, experts and non-experts alike, take the indicator, such as GDP, of national accounts as taken for granted economic reality. Uh, some people treat GDP figures as if they are directly observable. In fact, some member states of the United Nations sometimes complain that the estimated GDP figures by the United Nations are different from true figures. Um, so um, GDP gained the axiomatic status by now as if it is directly observable data. However, GDP is not directly observable. Macroeconomic data, when in the form of monetary aggregate, are not the value discovered but created. One aspect of macroeconomics can be defined as an inquiry that follows a quantitative formalism on a socially constructed reality. And the reality depicted is created by history, a theory, particularly the accounting principle that was applied. Um, when discussing the reasoning for economic growth, macroeconomists prefer using the word growth mechanism rather than growth metaphor. However, the metaphor would be a more appropriate term uh, there's no directly observable mechanism of economic growth. The presently dominant growth metaphor rests on the concept of accumulation. Double entry bookkeeping makes it possible to analyze the internal structure of accounting entity in the form of balance sheet uh, for stock and the profit and loss account that deal with flow. Several important concepts had emerged from double entry bookkeeping practice, which are balance, surplus, deficit, and accumulation. As Zompat asserted uh, in one of his books, uh, that capital did not exist before double, book, uh, double entry bookkeeping, the concept um, of accumulation was numerically made clear by double entry bookkeeping. At the summation of surpluses, the concept of accumulation is linked to a visual metaphor of stock and flow, which also appeals to intuitive sense. Moreover, the accumulation out of balance suit well in mainstream uh, economics for their emphasis on equilibrium and steady state as a basis of the analysis. Accumulation constitutes the main growth metaphor in economic development and main, in mainstream economic literature. The growth is driven by investments with, which, led, which lead to capital accumulation either in the form of physical capital or even human capital. Um, what the dominant growth metaphor values are the surpluses that can be accumulated. In order to accumulate, the surpluses need to be measurable, quantifiable, and addable. Um, these conditions of the growth metaphor, in addition to the main assumption of the construction of national accounts, cause the urban bias of macroeconomic analysis in favor of urban and formal sectors. Those sectors are fit in well in the growth metaphor. The rural sector is left out, and uh, here I would like to discuss the three sources of the bias. Um, the number one, measurability. Um, most economic activities are assumed to be market bound and be reflected by transaction of exchanges between goods, services, and money. Uh, from the record of transaction, we can measure the value of goods and services. However, if there is no economic transaction, goods and services provided will not be measured. 
historically business progressively take over the function of, say, some household labor, baking, sewing, cutting, laundering, that sort of thing. And um, when uh, the potential economic transactions were completed within the household, they will not provide measurable economic surpluses. Consequently, uh, whereas economic transactions of urban and formal sector are well measured, those of rural and typically informal sector are not. Um, the second source of bias, um, I would like to point out the uh, unit of measurement. Uh, unit of measurement is a common denominator for various goods and services so that we can add them up. The universal unit of measurement used in all accounting is a basis of exchange, which is often called the money of account. Unfortunately, however, um, this unit of unit is far from ideal. Uh, market prices do not reflect the relative economic significance of different categories of goods and services. Market prices do not reflect equal exchange of values. Market prices, which is the basis of price applied to in measuring goods and services, do not reassure the value. The price may be determined reflecting the social relationship between economic actors. While the prices of goods and services of urban sector are more likely to be determined in a monopolistic context where the prices stay above competitive prices, the rural sector, particularly agricultural sector, is exposed to competition. Um, the sector often a price taker. The terms of trade between urban and rural sector are naturally more beneficial to the urban sector. And third, source uh, land as a main factor of production. A crucial factor of production in the rural sector, land, is also left out from the dominant growth metaphor of capital accumulation. Land is assumed not to be accumulated, while investments and an incremental increase in capital stock will have a return to investment. The land is assumed to be produced rents, which is more of the return on scarcity. However, land needs investment in various forms, including continuous cultivation, and the value of farming land can be either appreciated or depreciated. In an extreme case, land can be degraded and be useless for productive farming. A farmer needs to be applied production techniques uh, which are suitable under the condition they face and determine their farming portfolio to maximize their productivity, avoiding replant failure and preserve the state of cultivation, etc. Um, in this point, again, the rural sector is left out. So in conclusion, can we address the urban bias in macroeconomic account? Um, as of today, I don't have the specific answer to this question. Of course, national account has been developed. Now they have satellite account, such as environmental account and water account. Um, but in practice, um, it is not well linked. There's a concept, but in practice, I haven't seen any that the uh, serious macroeconomic model or discussion based on the uh, um, extended national account, including um, embolment and water. Um, but having said this, I really want, wanted to point out with my presentation is, yes, um, that there are, um, maybe many of you have experienced that the arrogant macroeconomists um, but this, and I just wanted to say that the, uh, this is one reason why. Thank you very much. <laughs>